Leadership is about engaging, inspiring, motivating, guiding and resourcing people in your charge to the point that they acknowledge you as their leader and also at which point you'll have their trust, their loyalty and indeed their commitment and all of that makes things so much easier all round. Failure two is the failure by a leader to meet individually with each and every team member at least once a month. Now I call these meetings the one-to-ones. Now you may refer to them as something different, but this is a 10 minute to half hour meeting to ensure that you're supporting your follower in the right way. And I recommend these happening if you've never done them, initially once a week, then once a fortnight, and then no less frequently than once a month. By the way, as an aside, I often hear leaders claim that they lead a team. I lead a team of 15, 20, 25 people. No, you don't. If you were a full-time leader and only did leadership things, then you could possibly, possibly manage up to 10 or 12 followers, and that would be pushing it. Most leaders, however, are not full-time leaders, and they have their own productivity, their own, their own workload, their own projects to deliver. And the problem is, as soon as this other work gets in the way of being a leader, and perhaps prevents you from making sure you solve these seven leadership failures, if it gets in the way, I think you're always gonna have a battle on your hands. Why? Because without regular, ring-fenced, quality time with your followers, they will start to feel ignored and unimportant. They lose the connection with management, and that often causes passive or sometimes even active rebellion through those them and us justifications. Morale just plummets. Relationships suffer. And bear in mind that a bad relationship with the boss is cited by around 80% of people who leave an organisation. Perhaps it's because of this failure. What can make this worse is actually if a leader recognises that they should be doing these one-to-one -one meetings, puts them in the diary and then cancels them, often at short no notice sending out the message, my leadership of you, and hence your followership, is actually less important to me than my other work. And this, of course, will exacerbate the disconnect between you and your followers, and that will lead to multiple symptoms, including their feeling undervalued, undervalued irrelevant, and again, disconnected. So I, I cannot stress the importance of not failing with this issue. It is such a fundamental element of your job as a leader. I simply cannot understand why leaders make excuses for this not to happen. But I'm always speaking with my people, says one leader. Of course, as exactly what you should be doing, but it won't be ring fence quality time with you. But I just, I just let them get on with it. They don't need me. Well, it doesn't sound like you're leading anyone then. I mean, if they don't need you to be their leader, what are your responsibilities towards them? Ah, uh, it's okay, Andy. We do all that stuff at the appraisal. Oh, the appraisal. You, you mean the yearly roundup of good and bad, half of which is now six months out of date? Look, don't get me wrong, appraisals are excellent when they're done well, but the one-to-one -one is very different. It's regular, often, and can more formally address issues than a catch-up on the shop floor, especially if that issue relates to an individual follower. But Andy, it's all right. We already have team meetings. And rightly so. Team meetings, though, will carry a very different agenda than your one-to-ones. And then the biggest excuse of them all. Andy, I simply haven't got the time. Time invested, being, invested in being a good leader will create productive, committed, loyal and valuable followers. Perhaps the problem is much of your time is clearing up the mess left behind in your wake as an ineffective leader. Perhaps if your followers were led better, your workload would actually reduce. This is what your followers want you to know. So have a look at that followers brief after this lecture. It gives you some ideas as to some of the questions you could ask in your one-to-one, -one, but make it fit your circumstances and of course the circumstances of your followers. My recommendation, <laughs> simply this. If you currently don't do one-to-ones with your followers, then you need to start them yesterday.